Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. We've got two running backs who are hoping for plenty of running lanes on that field today. It's Wes Ravens going up against Murray's Titans. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We welcome all of you to Nissan Stadium on the banks of the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their Titans are set to match up with Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens. Hi again, folks. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And as we all know, Charles, offenses today, they're driven by the passing attack. But Larry highlighted in the open a couple of running backs who might just disagree with that assessment. Yeah, and sometimes, occasionally, you get a game where running backs will match each other, kind of carry for carry on opposite teams. But for the most part, they focus on themselves. How many touches will they get? And can they create big plays for their own team? And both of these guys, certainly more than five, ten touchbacks. They're workhorses. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Tennessee Titans, this offense, and Marcus Mariota, they'll be hoping to put in some touchdowns into the end zone because in that win over the Browns last week, it was a win, but it was ugly. They only mustered four field goals. Yeah, to them, it was a work of art because they won. You're exactly right. To everyone else, it was an ugly win, but you could almost feel it coming, couldn't you? Because they were coming up that Monday night win, emotional win against Indianapolis, a team, a franchise that had handled them, what, 16 straight times, 17 straight times? So for them to come back and play Cleveland, you you knew the letdown was there, but Ryan Suckup, four field goals, got it done. They go play action here on first down. And his first look is incomplete. He was looking for DeMarco Murray out of the backfield, and that'll bring up second down. And now we get a peek at the Titan offense. The 2016 Tennessee Titans offense liked to bill itself as exotic smash mouth. And they got a smash mouth part down correctly. Finished third in the league in rushing, but only 25th in passing. So to become more exotic, they've got to get better play from their wide receivers on the perimeter. Now here's the first carry for DeMarco Murray. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. When talking about the Ravens' defense, it's pretty easy to take them for granted, isn't it? They're traditionally a top ten defense, but if you take a closer look at the numbers in 2016, that might surprise you about how good they were during the season. Fifth against the run, ninth against the pass, seventh overall. Once again, the Baltimore Ravens, one of the better defenses in the NFL. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And some space here. He'll have a first down past the 40. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And that one results in 35 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first down, Murray looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
He couldn't get the edge there. It wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the running back to go, especially for offensive linemen trying to get out ahead. But their footwork and speed is negligible on that play. No gain at all for the offense. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. And right side, Henry's got it. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll bring up fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. In his 10th year, here's Brett Kern to punt this one. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. Pressure comes and it's blocked. The Ravens block it. Now it's picked up near midfield. The 30, the 20, 10, and it's six points for the Baltimore Ravens. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at now to kick it away following the touchdown and that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback the Titan offense now working their way back onto the field now as they run it to start the drive and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24 that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down came out in a power set but that only served to put more men in the box and guess what if you're going to do that you've got to win up front right your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders they lost all leverage on that play And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. A play fake to Murray. Now Mariota. He's going to air one out. 
And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. From the gun, Mariota. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Here's Brett Kern now. On for his second punt. And remember, his first one was blocked. yards on the punt there and the Ravens they'll take over so we get ready to see Baltimore's offense this is a Baltimore crew led by that man Joe Flacco who dipped below 500 to 3 and 4 with their losses last week against Minnesota and Flacco he was well under 100 yards until the fourth quarter and it's been like that all season for Joe Flacco and the offense of Baltimore they are really predicated on having a strong running game and letting him throw off a play action to accumulate numbers well, they're leading Russia at 30 yards in the game. All right, so when that happens, that means he's just got to stand back and fling it, and that doesn't work well for their offense. As you mentioned, three and four, lost some ground to the Steelers in the AFC North. First and ten here for Flacco. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And we get a quick peek at the Ravens starting offense. This organization's identity for years has been its defense, but if you take a closer look at the offense in 2016, better than you might think. 17th overall, 12th in passing. They're looking to take the next step now to becoming a top 10 offense in the NFL. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Now a carry here for Terrence West. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. The starting defense for the Titans. The Tennessee Titans defense lived up to the mantra that every defensive coordinator preaches, and that stop the run first. They finished second against the run. Unfortunately, they finished 30th against the pass, which led to a 20th overall ranking in defense. In order for them to continue to ascend, they've got to shore up the back end in the secondary and get a better pass rush. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And this is going to be incomplete. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Out come the Titans now. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal. Put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Yeah. 
10 yards still left on second down. A handoff. It's Murray. And he'll get this up only to about the 22. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. On third down, Mariota. And that is incomplete. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength, and he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Brian Arakpo able to use that strength and get him for a loss of two. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Flacco here on second down. And he's got the veteran here. It's Mike Wallace. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. They'll run it with West. And they go backwards here. Losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Again here with West. <laughs> and some room to work. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. And that's something that's been lacking in Baltimore's running game the last few seasons. The ability to really hit on a big run. Last year, their longest run was just 41 yards all season. Four yards per carry near the bottom of the league.
And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. So when you call a corner blitz, what a lot of teams call a cat blitz, you're expected to come after the quarterback, but in this case, he ran into the ball carrier. Really nice technique, because what you do is you come deep as the deepest offensive player so he can't get outside of you. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. They keep it on the ground. Allen again. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Third down, Flacco from the gun. That's caught out left by Perriman. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. With Steve Smith retiring, someone's got to fill the void as the number one receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. And Brashad Perriman, going into his third year, this needs to be his time. First round pick, of course, missed all of his rookie year with a knee injury, 33 catches last year. He has the ability, now he has to just go out and do it. quickly here he can fight only to about the four only a yard on the pickup there second and goal now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense holding them to one yard on a first down run it'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play and he'll give it here to his running back and he will force his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Terrence West taking it in from four yards out. And the Ravens will extend their lead. Second effort there. He was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. now for the extra point and it's good to make it 14 nothing a good drive that time as they go nine plays in all and it's West that finishes it off with a touchdown run Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. Right, 
They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Again, it's Murray. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. They'll run the counter with Murray. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. He just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. Second down run for Murray. Now that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. So first and second down went in the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. And before they can get settled in here, time expires. On the first quarter of action, 14-0 is our score. We're back to Nashville right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With the former volunteer Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Titans with the football here to begin quarter number two. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. to avoid the hit. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Brett Kern now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments.
They start on the ground with West. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Some fancy footwork, but not much room to operate. Just up past the 25 and no further. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Barely got that snap off. Flacco now. And he's got his man. That's Macklin. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Ten yards there. Good enough for a Raven first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Gives to Allen. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Second down, Flacco to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. The Ravens on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment defense. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. The Ravens on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. Here it's third and two. It's Flacco. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Sam Cook now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And the Titans getting set to go. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. 
And not great starting field position here for the offense. Tenth carry of the game now, Murray. And he's not going to get out of the end zone. Murray is taken down for the safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. And it's taken in at the 9. <laughs> The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. That's into the hands of Wallace over the middle. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On third down, that's West. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Flacco. It fights him off. Fighting to stay upright. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. That incompletion gives me the chance to bring up Joe Thomas, who last week had his consecutive play streak ended, Charles. He was out there for 10,363 consecutive snaps. He is the NFL's version of Lou Gehrig, Cal Ripken in baseball. The true Iron Man. Talk about doing your job on a team that never went to the playoffs, never had a winning season. Six head coaches, six general managers, 20 quarterbacks in 10 and a half seasons, yet he still did his job, and he did it really, really well. Pro Bowl level every year. Tough news now for him, though, out for the season. The Ravens on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Operating out of the gun, Flacco, that escapes the sack. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. 
I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Now a handoff looking right. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down, Flacco now. Under pressure, and Flacco's going to be dropped. Jarrell Casey in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. now after the sack needs something good here on third and long from the gun Flacco now a hit and Flacco drops the football it's loose So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity missed. It definitely was because that's all defense is talking about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. DeMarco Murray and company heading back onto the field. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. We'll see if he can look and do some soul searching now. Toss to Murray. <laughs> Pretty nice move, but not a ton of space there. They stop him shy of the 25. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense, it's really kind of geared to stop that play. Your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. They go with Murray again. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. The Titans on third down. Just one for five to this point. This will be third and five. Mariota now. And able to find Decker. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10.
Now a give, left side, this is Murray. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And that's why you see so many teams play a 3-4 defense, because that set gives you a lot of flexibility about where to bring pressure from, and it's hard for an offense to pick it up. Left side, right side, up the middle, especially with some really flexible linebackers. you that coming up in two minutes time we'll hand you off to Orlando where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. So the run gets them the first and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now Mariota to Decker over the middle. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Mariota yelling out the play call as he hustles everyone to get set. Looking deep downfield here for Decker. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground and it brings up third. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Titans on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Throwing is Mariota. And he hits his man, Matthews. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20 at the 15. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you at important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. From the red zone now, Mariota. And he'll hit his tight end, Walker. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Mariota again. Goes underneath for Henry. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. So now it's first and goal. To the air again, Mariota. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half.
And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Now a second down throw for Mariota. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. Back-to-back -back great plays defensively. You get the sack on first and goal. A great job in coverage there. All of a sudden, they're looking at third and goal from further back than when they started. And the really good play callers look ahead and down in distance sequence. Now he's got to backtrack a little bit and go maybe off his play sheet to try and dial something up here. Third and goal, Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here's Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. will put this one right through and they'll at least get on the board here still trailing but 16 to 3 now so they get the field goal but part of that was a 14 play drive to get the three normally when you hold the ball that long run that many plays you end up in the end zone there's a breakdown on the defense something happens in this case that didn't but really good ball controlled by the offense they're hoping that they can wear them down if they keep having drives like that Suck up now, set to kick it off, following the main field goal. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Back onto the field now goes Buck Allen as he gets ready. A good job in the passing game, decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally, you run to set up the pass. Here, it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. First and 10 here for Flacco. Looking left side, that's caught by Macklin. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Flacco from the gun. And Watson has it right side. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Second down and four. Yes. 
Flacco looks to throw. A look over the middle, and he's got Paraman. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. And now a first down following that long gain. A red zone first down for Flacco. And Watson has it right side. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. So we are at halftime here on Halloween as we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Titans haven't played their best football and trail because of it. The Ravens will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. Titans open up on offense. Mariota's got it on the run. He'll end up running for over 20 yards on the play. Moving to late in the first quarter. West is going to hit off the left side, and he kept off the long drive with the TD. As they move out in front, 14-0. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? How do they score here, especially a touchdown? It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? They begin here with a run by West, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Now West. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That good for 22 and a first down. Partner, I think a lot of people thought that Baltimore would draft at least one runner. In fact, they didn't take any skill position players in the draft. So I think a lot's still going to fall on Terrence West. Well, he did have over 1,000 yards from scrimmage last year, a career high. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now a handoff here to his running back. 
And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. A gain of three, second down. as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. They lost two there, and it's third down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? And <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? The Ravens on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and nine. Here's Flacco. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. They go play action here on first down. Going deep here for Matthews. And that's caught inside the 30. A big play that time for the Titans. 54 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Now the offense lining up first and 10. They'll run it left side with Murray. Then he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Mariota now on second down. Walker with a grab. Left side. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. From the gun, Mariota. Wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. Terrell Suggs coming in to drop in for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. There's a little.
little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Here's Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And Suckup will put this one right through. And the lead is down to 10 now at 16-6. A decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they do inch a bit closer. Yeah, still lots of time to go in this one. Take the points, move on, and let your defense try to get the ball back. Suckup now set to kick it off following the main field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Now a play fake here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, the tight end. That'll bring up second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now Flacco. They'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The Ravens on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 11. Fake to Allen. Here's Flacco. Losing four yards that time. And now it's fourth down. Here's Sam Cook now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Titan football. The Titans offense now. They work their way back onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Carries piling up. It's Murray again. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. 
No other way to say it, but it was an off year for DeMarco Murray in Philadelphia and Chip Kelly's offense. Didn't really seem to be a fit, but when he went to Tennessee playing for Mike Malarkey, boy, did he fit in a big way. Finished third in the NFL in rushing behind Ezekiel Elliott and a late charging Jordan Howard. He was ahead of Howard much of the year. I remember Coach Malarkey in preseason said, DeMarco Murray's my number one back. He'll get plenty of carries here, and he did. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now a give. This is Murray. Oh, he's got a little daylight. DeMarco Murray, kiss him goodbye. Touchdown, Titans. DeMarco Murray, 64 yards. And the Titans have made this a one-score game. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And he's got him back within a field goal now. It's 16-13. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Now here's Suck about to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now here come the Ravens. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively. Put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They look to throw on first and ten with Flacco. And his throw here's incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target. And now it's second down. And on second and ten now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Calling about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. The Ravens on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and seven. From the gun, Flacco. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. 
So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. getting set following the call of that timeout. Off play action. Flacco looking deep here for Macklin. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks to, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. But guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Second and ten. Flacco once more. Going back to Macklin. This time he's got him. Complete. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. 23 yards on the play. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, Bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Flacco. And that's a loss of seven on the first down play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. That one good for 10 yards. And they're going to face a third down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. The Ravens on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and eight. Operating out of the gun. Flacco. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Brian Arakpo in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up. And now nothing but green ahead of him. He's at the 30, 10, and he's going to score. It's a Titans touchdown. 
We talk about it a lot. One of the dangers of the long field goal, you got to kind of hit it low and drive it. That makes it susceptible to a block here. Not only do they block it, they return it. And how about how well they did on the return where they didn't create a penalty? Oftentimes in that type of a scrambling situation, someone will clip, someone will block below the waist, right? It, you name it. In this case, though, that didn't happen. They formed it up, and he took it all the way back for a touchdown. Suck up for the extra point. And that will make this a four point game. Now it's Ryan Suckup on after the touchdown to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. They run a draw here on second down, and he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Now it looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. The Ravens on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and seven. Play action. Flacco. He's going to wind up and air it out. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's Sam Cook now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And that will come the offense as they take over. And right now we spotlight DeMarco Murray. And in the early going, the running game, as we see the numbers, it just wasn't on point. Well, now it's gotten more true to form. And sometimes it takes a little while for an offensive line to get in sync. Because early in the game, defenses throw different patterns at you, different formations, different sets. And you might not block them quite the way you want to. But as you start to get into a groove and you figure out what they're doing, now it all comes together. And that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah, 
A play fake to Murray. Now Mariota. Left side caught by Matthews. The 40. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Titans. Rashard Matthews, 81 yards. And the Titans find a way to stretch their lead. Partner, you know what the real key is to stopping a good passing attack? You tell me. Being able to tackle as soon as a guy catches a football. Didn't work out there. No, because when you give up the big run after catch, the rack yardage, that puts your defense in a big-time stressful position. A lot of rack yardage and a touchdown there on the big play. Extra point try now for Suckup. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Now here's Suckup out to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They're looking to turn things around here. They've been shut down in this third quarter. That was after a good first half offensively. And you wonder where it all goes, and it feels like it goes away fast because it takes some time to build up good momentum Great play calling, excellent execution. And then in like a blink of an eye, <laughs> you're losing the game. Yep. How do you get back there again? I'm sure they've talked about it. And they've got a plan. Now can they put it into practice? The lead gone. Now the search to find it again. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Wesley Woodyard in there with pressure yet again, and that's the seventh time they've dropped him here this afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. It's the Ravens with possession of the football, but trailing on the big board as we get set for the fourth. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. Not a great start to this drive. You had the sack, now the false start. I mean, it doesn't take much to either read lips or just imagine what the head coach is saying right now. Get your head in the game, guys. Let's go. Let's go. 
On second down, Flacco to throw. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Brian Arakpo getting him once again, his third sack of the afternoon. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards it's third and very long now a carry for Allen and a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down we often talk of situational football let's just call it team football the defense did their job got off the field brought the punting situation so they're turning the ball back over to their offense you think those guys will get along very well right now of course they will defense helped the offense now it's their turn to take it downfield here's sam cook now as he's on to punt for baltimore With it is Jackson. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. 20. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. A big play there. 33 yards. And the Ravens draw a bit closer. So they get the score, partner. Game's not over, but they still need some help here. Agreed. They definitely need some help. But they took care of the first part by scoring themselves. Now a big play here as the Ravens are going to go for the two-point conversion. Flacco. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. DeMarco Murray and company heading back onto the field. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. And on the outside, they're playing press cover. A first down throw for Mariota. And his throw is incomplete. One of his main targets, Delaney Walker, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. They'll run it 
it now, out of the gun. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. To throw Mariota. And he's got Decker, left side. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down at four now. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he locates Walker, complete. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. A Titan first down, Mariota to Walker. Could just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So the offense has it first and ten. They go play action. Mariota. They find some open field here. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. comes to the line now first and ten a 20th carry coming up now for Murray and a short gain down to about the 33 give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven the fourth quarter here they've got the lead they want to keep it on the ground that's what they're doing Smart football, keep the clock grinding, keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Now a second down throw for Mariota. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and that's going to bring up a third down. The Titans on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and five. Working out of the gun, Mariota. Throw left side complete. It's Walker. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Go, 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 go. 
This is Murray. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. A run, it's Murray. And a short gain here down to the 22. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. The Titans on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and seven. Off play action to Henry. Here's Mariota. And some room to run now. And avoids the contact by sliding. A gain of eight and a first down. here play 12 coming up for the offense there's the former Heisman winner it's Derrick Henry five yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five and I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. They run with Murray, and he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Eric Decker, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Titans are going to add on to their lead. No lead safe in the new NFL, but this score is really going to give them some needed breathing room. Suck up for the extra point. This one gives his guys a 12-point lead. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays, and it ends with a Tennessee score. Now here's Suck about to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. First 
First and ten here for Flacco. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. It's a gain of nine yards. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Flacco. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jarrell Casey in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Flacco and the Ravens now, after the sack, need something good here on third and long. Flacco from the gun. Throw right side taken in by Wallace. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. They'll run for it with West. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Here's Flacco. Throw right side to Perriman, and it's caught. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Brashad Perriman, 42 yards. And the Ravens have cut it to within a score. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. And this is back to a five point game. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. A little less than 90 seconds to go. This will be an onside kick. Down the number. 
Edwards. There he goes. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. down Murray and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line so a defensive timeout chance to regather regroup and get set as we resume action Second, so one more chance to stop the clock here, and we'll be back. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So a ways to go here on third and ten. Mariota gives to Henry. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Now Joe Flacco and the offense heading back out onto the field. I would imagine you want to win every game big, but if you're a quarterback in the NFL, this is the spot that you love. You've been dreaming of it since you were a kid, playing in the backyard or the front yard, wherever, where you went through those imaginary situations. Now it's real, though. What practice have you put in since the OTAs and mini camps, preseason camp, sequence of plays, get the ball to the outside, get it out of bounds, save your timeouts, move the ball downfield to get your team in a position to win the game. And a field goal, of course, no good. They need a score. That's caught out left by Perriman. A gain of 39 that time. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. 
still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy's still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds? He got it done. So here we go, first and ten now. He'll look to throw. Looking sideline, incomplete. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. Watson. And the ball is knocked out. It's picked up by the Titans. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they've got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. Marcus Mariota getting ready to go again here on offense. He's had quite the turnaround, Charles, at the start of the game. Passing game was a little bit of a mess, but he's back on the horse, so to speak. Love seeing how someone can rebound from a slow start or a tough start. It means that they're strong mentally. They've kind of calmed themselves down. Everyone's rallied around them. Maybe they even changed game planning a little bit in order to make things better for them. The Titans go victory formation as they take an aim. should be in. Well, I know it points to this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people who really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Titans are winners here as we say so long from Nashville.